In this lecture, I will show you how you can apply P delta effects. Is it uh, the requirement of the structure that P delta effects need to be considered or not? First of all, little bit about P delta. Here is a, for example, a simple structure. Here, that is a building. Consider that is a building of height h. The load is applied P. Then the only reaction will be P. But if the building is high rise and uh, the uh, if there is no lateral load, mean Q is zero, then uh, Q into H movement will be zero. At this point, there will be no movement. But if there is a high rise building and there is a lateral load due to earthquake or due to wind loads then at the bottom movement will also come but uh, here is the phenomena if there is a Q load due to lateral loads of earthquake or wind then this at the uh, spot there will be movement is equal to QH Q into H but uh, in the actual structures what happen here P is, is due to the gravity loads uh, when uh, the lateral load applied the due to the bending behavior of this uh, structure there is a, uh, and a deformation uh, at the top delta then uh, the gravity loads produce an extra movement uh, for example previously movement is only Q into H but now the additional movement that will be P into delta that's why the uh, this whole uh, phenomena is called p delta effect the definition of p delta is here p delta effect also known as geometric non linearity because now the member is not straight okay uh, involves the equilibrium and compa uh, compatibility relationships ships of structural system loaded about its deflected configuration here you can see now the equations have been changed we have to uh, take a, take into account this extra moment that will be developed due to p into delta so to account this effect uh, we have to apply certain con uh, certain checks and conditions so that p delta uh, effects considered in our building so Here is a P delta effect according to ASC 716. P delta effects. P delta effects on story shares and movements the resulting member forces and movements and the story drifts uh, induced by these effects are not required. Means P delta effect is not required until and unless uh, not required to be considered where the stability coefficient theta is determined as determined by the following equation is equal to or less than 0 0.1 means if we calculate this parameter and if it is less than 0 0.1 then we need not to consider p delta effects here p is the total load means uh, gravity load it will include dead load and live load okay here is a delta that is a story drift uh, i is the important factor where V is the uh, seismic shear force acting between the stories X and XI. Uh, I will show in the uh, from E tabs how you can calculate story shears. H is a story height and here is a deflection amplification factor. Okay, that is the table uh, I have shown in the right side. But before going further, here is a maximum limit of stability coefficient means you, uh, your um, stability uh, coefficient should be less than or equal to this maximum or should not be gone beyond the 0 0.25 and the beta value uh, you can consider one that is permitted by the code so now the deflection amplification factor okay you have to select your structural system what stru uh, structural system are you using is it a shear wall system is it a beam column system or whatsoever so for example here is a bearing wall system building frame system okay different types special reinforced concrete shear walls okay ordinary uh, plain concrete shear walls uh, for example in this example i am considering intermediate 
reinforced concrete moment resisting frame uh, the response modification factor will be 5 uh, and here is a uh, 4.5 that is a uh, uh, displacement amplification factor that is needed in this sorry here in a deflection amplification factor cd here deflection amplification factor cd i have selected the type intermediate reinforced concrete frames here the value is 4.5 okay uh, in ubc the, there is a difference that intermediate response modification factor is 5.5 or 5 and here is that is also different in different course that is a 4.5 or 4 so right now I will select as it is uh, for intermediate moment uh, reinforced concrete moment resisting frame that will be 4.5 okay now I am going uh, in this structure for the calculation of axial loads for example here define load patterns I have defined the earthquake axe in the previous lecture you can see okay now I will define a new load combination before defining a new load combination I will save my model file save as okay now 13 model service loads at service loads because why I am considering the service loads because that is mentioned in the code uh, you can also select uh, the parameters from the ASC 716 okay pay number um, that is a 90 pay number okay I have saved the model model service loads why here the total axial load uh, at level where computing px no individual load factor need exceed one means we need not to apply the uh, uh, factors 1.2 1.6 only the service loads so that's why I have saved my model sorry save my model with the name model service load uh, now I will go in the define load combinations I will delete all these combinations just add new load that will be P uh, you can in this dead plus life dead one super dead one sorry life one okay all the loads axial loads i have considered in this axial load combination okay okay now when you uh, analyzing the structures at service load combinations then the modification factors will also change here is the aci stiffness modification factors at survey condition at ultimate at ultimate for example beam 0.35 for column 0 0.7 uh, for uh, wall uncracked 0 0.7 and different but for service conditions the values are changed for beams that will be 0 0.5 for columns that will be 1 and for flat uh, slabs or flat plates the value will be 0 0.35 so here I will select one by one first 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 of all I will select all the slabs select property slab select now I will assign slab uh, stiffness modifier okay here I will put the stiffness modifier 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 okay that is requirement at service load condition apply okay now I will select all the columns mm, select properties frame section I have selected all the columns now assign frame property modifier here it is 1 1 all the values apply 
okay now i will uh, select the beam properties uh, frame selections all the beam now go to assign frame section property modifier here i will define uh, assign the property modifier according to the beam for ei uh, means uh, for moment of inertia that will be 0 0.5 uh, you can also put in j is the torsional constant 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 okay apply okay let me check previously i have applied the property modifier to the columns or not mm. property modifier none means one one it's okay so now for the walls select properties walls for example i have selected all the walls now let's see what is the factor if we are considering the cracked or uncracked let's consider in this example uncracked so its value is 1 assign shell Uh, I have selected all the shells now the property modifier 1 1 apply okay now we have changed the modifiers according to the conditions uh, I have applied the axial loads uh, let's see what we have needed axial loads story shares deflection amplification factor that is we have selected 4.5 so where it need to be put here 4.5 okay and that is the important importance factor that is 1 and formulas have been embedded in this sheet you have to put the data software automatically calculate the drifts its stability coefficient and apply the check whether p delta is needed or not okay uh, ex1 in the positive x direction ex2 in the negative x direction similarly in the y positive uh, y and negative y okay so now uh, i will run analysis now our analysis is complete uh, now for results go to tables here is the model uh, and here is the structure layout here story data double click here the data is millimeter in the in, in this table we also needed all the data in millimeter or in kilonewton uh, you can also do the calculations uh, you by changing the units uh, put the heights in inch all the displacements in, in inch and loads in the keep so you can also calculate in the fps system but here in this example i will use the si system for the story data uh, here copy the story data story 4 story 3 story copy here just go paste okay 3000 millimeter mean 3 meter height now for the axial loads go to result structure data sorry uh, go to analysis results uh, structure results here is a story forces okay in the story forces you have to there is all the combinations 
you have to select your dot combination p that plus live and then you have to select the location where you want to uh, take the loads i will select bottom okay here select all the bottom loads copy take paste okay now for shear select earthquake in x direction that is ex1 okay select all the shear force copy and sorry paste okay now i will select the story displacement okay for story displacement go to uh, display uh, results displacement diaphragm center of mass displacement okay this displacements only diaphragm displacements only appear if you have assigned the diaphragm to your slabs if not then please select all the slabs and go to assign and then assign diaphragm then this option will appear okay so now for the story displacements again the diaphragm here is the uh, here is all so i have selected the uh, earthquake in x direction select all the displacement copy and paste okay so now you can see all the theta values are less than 0.1 means no p delta needed so we have to design our structure uh, without p delta because p delta uh, not needed according to court's requirement so now i will increase the height of the buildings for example up to 9 or 10 stories and again apply the uh, the p delta effect uh, check so that's all have a nice day